Hi, good morning to one and all. I am K. V. Harish, Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, IIT Kanpur. You are watching MOOC lecture course on hydration, porosity and strength of cementitious material. Uh, now we will be seeing lecture 11, uh, Portland cement based paste systems. The textbooks and reference materials are shown. The topics that will be covered in this lecture is definition of Portland cement based paste systems, some factors and variability that you have in Portland cement based paste system and also the strategies that you use in uh, Portland cement based paste system. And an overview for this lecture is as follows, this lecture provides an introduction to Portland cement based paste systems and remember that uh, the terminology Portland cement based paste system is something that uh, we are introducing uh, in this lecture and uh, you generally will not find this terminology elsewhere in any textbook or other uh, places. We will uh, at a later stage discuss about the importance of this uh, terminology. So, this lecture provides an introduction to the Portland cement based space systems and helps the viewers to understand the factors and variability in the selection of a particular composite for application. In addition, the limitations in the mixed design strategies and uh, requirements for other strategies for uh, Portland cement based space system is also covered. From this lecture onwards, Portland cement based space system will be referred as PCBPS. So, and the viewers may uh, make a note of that. So, definition Portland cement based space system we are referring in this lectures as any binder system that contains Portland cement and water as the main binder constituent. That does not mean that the binder constituent should only have Portland, Portland cement and water. It may have some admixtures or additives or chemical admixtures. So, the presence of these admixtures additives can actually modify the Portland cement or Portland cement paste. So, we are introducing this broad terminology for easier understanding of the audience. So, in PCPPS what we have is the terminology is divided into two parts. One is Portland cement based paste or composite. In that you have a Portland cement paste. You also have a modified Port Portland cement paste where the influence of pozzolan can actually change the properties of the paste. Uh, information about pozzolans, mineral admixtures and other things will be covered from lecture 21 to lecture 30. Now, the word system is introduced primarily to say that you also have a cement paste system, you also may have mortar system, you may also have concrete system, you also may have cementitious material system. And uh, what you find in all these four systems is that the cement paste is basically common for mortar and concrete. And uh, the additional entity is fine aggregates in the case of mortars and fine aggregates and coarse aggregates in the case of concrete. With regard to cementitious material, uh, because of the presence of pozzolans or mineral admixtures, the cement paste gets modified and in addition to that you may also have fine aggregates and coarse aggregates. So, the abbreviations typically used in these lectures are PCBPS or PCB composites, both refer to the more or less same meaning. Now, the three dimensional factors that you have for the selection of Portland cement based paste system is application based factors, performance based factors and economy based factors. These dimensional factors primarily stand as critically important factors and in addition to these three factors, you may also have a fourth factor called as sustainability which provides a completely new dimension to these three factors. 
currently in this lecture we will not discuss about sustainability once we go to mineral admixtures or pozolons which is between lectures 21 to 30 we will see about sustainability substantially now let us first uh, see the application factors under application what we generally see is that do we have any construction based factors from application standpoint so in in such a case we have to question ourselves many times engineers question themselves to see whether the portland cement based composite has any issues with respect to the construction operations that are conventionally performed at the site some of them are mixing and transporting placing and compacting the other word is also called as consolidating and curing so do you have affect the construction operation and uh, these are broadly under the topic quality control parameters and uh, in addition to these factors the second question that we need to think when it comes to application is does the portland cement based composite requires conventional methodology or special methodology in construction operations so for example if you take a, say a tunneling operation where you want to concrete a portion of the lining of the walls special operations are required like short creating so whereas if you take a underground concreting we totally use a different special methodology called trimmy placement or sometimes even we can use there may be multiple special methodologies so the introduction of each of these methodology will have their own factors and uh, that will come under this application factor and likewise if you take a, say a pavement construction we have choices of either going ahead with the normal construction operations or we may have a sophisticated methodologies like slip form method so the choice of the method that is used for a particular application and can be a big factor and there may be other factors in the methodology which can play a significant role now the third one we can also have situation specific parameters for example assume that a concreting is done at the site and if you have in a particular location congested reinforcement then in that case we prefer to have a highly workable or flowable mixture so that it can completely fill the forms and reinforcements are completely filled with concrete in the other case we could also have a pavement construction as we have seen in the uh, previous point and for which you do not need a high workable mixture in such cases we can handle with low workability if you take uh, bridges for certain types of bridges we may have to use high strength mixtures so what basically happens is the situations are different for these three cases so likewise the properties also are different many times factors arise because of situation specific conditions likewise if you take the fourth point factors arising from special requirements for example for certain applications we need special properties such as high bond strength high flexural strength high impact strength high fatigue strength or other strengths uh, similarly there may be special requirements like high slump high slump retention uh, primarily high slump retention is required if the transportation of concrete is going to take place after a particularly slump retention is required when concrete has to be transported over longer distances before placement likewise you may have a freezing and thawing environment for which the special requirement is that you need additional air content in the mixture 
So, what we have seen here is that under application depending upon the construction operation or the special methodology used or situation specific or special requirements the factors keeps on changing and for different application we have different set of factors that come into picture and this is primarily important when you go for the selection of a particular Portland cement based paste systems. Similarly, when you see the second dimension which is performance, the questions that are generally asked are as follows. Does the Portland cement based composite have desired strength? Remember here these are not special requirements, these are general requirements and uh, what are the general limits that are provided by the standards? And when we say desired strength, it does not have to necessarily be compressive strength. It could be bond strength, flexible strength, impact, fatigue or others. But remember that in this case, we are talking about general requirements. We are not talking about special requirement as in the case that we have seen previously. So, the normal limits that you have for compressive bond, flexure, impact, fatigue or others should also be known as a performance factor. Now, coming on to the second one which is does the Portland cement based composite have desired durability? Now, durability is again a very broad uh, terminology and uh, the there are different causes of deterioration that happen in uh, Portland cement based paste systems. Some could be physical, some could be chemical and some examples are provided here. So, the durability uh, factors can be divided into two parts, one is a physical, the other one is a chemical. Physical you may have abrasion resistance, you may want your concrete to be resistant to abrasion, you may want your concrete to resist scaling actions and freeze thaw actions. At the same time you may also want concrete to resist shrinkage or thermal effects and all these things come under physical. Now, moving on to chemical, you may either have alkali silica reaction distress, sulphate attack, acid and other salt attacks, corrosion etcetera. So, you have lot many factors that come under durability and depending upon the environmental condition and the situation, we may have to choose one of these factors. Remember that in some cases two or three factors could also come together. Uh, the same properties that we have seen under durability can also be grouped in a different way. For example, you could have porosity related issues where shrinkage effects comes under this category. You may also have ASR sulphate attack, acid and salt attacks and corrosion coming under permeability related parameters and you may also have others where abrasion scale and freeze or resistance can be grouped. Remember that porosity is also connected to permeability in a uh, particular uh, sense. Uh, the connection of por porosity and permeability is not clear at this point of time, but remember that in cases where porosity and permeability are related, then these factors under permeability will also be factors under porosity and vice versa. So, the third question which comes to mind is does the Portland cement based composite have desired fresh properties and again when we talk about fresh properties we are talking about general requirements and limits. So, from an engineer standpoint it is extremely important to understand what is the conventional slump levels that are required for a particular application and what is the setting time uh, limits. Uh, the uh, initial setting time as well as final setting time limits and uh, the conventional range of temperatures and several others. So, the performance is largely seen under this head from the angle of general requirements and limits. Coming on to the third dimension which is factors under economy. Uh, the questions generally asked is are the ingredients used for the composite cheaply available? The second one is is the production cost of each ingredient low? 
is a cost of making the composite low, is a methodology to produce material low, sorry is a cost of methodology to produce material low, is a cost of construction of the structure low, why not use some other composites. So, these questions have to be properly addressed under the dimension economy in order to make sure that a particular composite can be used for application. So, in the last few slides we have seen that you have several factors under the three dimensions application, performance and economy and how do you control these factors. The first thing that is important for controlling is that we need to first prioritize the factors based on importance. And remember the importance is again a very broader terminology because for each application the performance differs as, I, as we have already seen there are general requirements as well as special requirements. So, prioritizing the factors come first. Performance and economy are many times adjusted by using single or multiple mixed design strategies. This is very important. Um, I repeat it performance and economy are many times adjusted by single or multiple mixed design strategies. And we have already seen some of the mixed design strategies to control workability, durability, strength and economy already under the uh, lecture mix, mix design strategies. Now, uh, when we think of using Portland cement paste for application, what we need to question ourselves is do we have advantages or do we have disadvantages and we usually compare the cement paste with mortars or concrete. So, when we do such comparison the relative disadvantage and the word relative is important for the simple reason that we are comparing the application of paste with that of mortars and concrete only. So, the relative disadvantage that you have in paste is that for the same water to cement ratio the paste shrinks more than mortars or concrete. The amount of cement that is used for unit volume is extremely high and that makes the paste uneconomical for most application. Uh, so, these are the two main disadvantages that we have with cement paste. Now, do we have advantages over mortars or concrete? Answer is yes, we have advantages. For the same water to cement ratio, the strength of paste is higher than mortars or concrete. For the same water to cement ratio, workability of paste is higher than mortars or concrete. For the same water to cement ratio, durability of paste is better than mortars or concrete. Remember that strength, workability, durability or comes under performance factors and from the performance factors paste is very good for application, but in terms of economy factor it is it has a huge disadvantage. Now, let us move to Portland cement mortars or concrete when we are seeing for application. Now, the same slide if you see from the standpoint of mortars, what we have is that for the same water to cement ratio strength of mortars or concrete is lower than paste and likewise for workability and likewise for durability. So, the negatives that you have in mortars or concrete is primarily because of the use of, of fine aggregates and coarse aggregates in proper proportions. So, and likewise if you see the advantages, the shrinkage of mortar or concrete is substantially lower than paste and mortars and concrete are very economical compared to paste. So, you have two advantages and you have three disadvantages. Just because you have three disadvantages, you cannot completely say that mortars or concrete have uh, cannot be used primarily because we can use strategies, the right strategies to convert the disadvantages to advantage. So, primarily this is done during the mixed design stage and we have already seen the mixed design strategies. Now, 
what are the strategies that you have to understand Portland cement based base systems? We usually have two categories broadly uh, classified. One is the macro level strategies, the other one is the micro level strategies. In the macro level strategies, we have the mixed design strategies for each of the performance characteristics and in the micro level strategy, we have to study based on hydration models. Now the question arises, why do we need a micro level strategy when already macro level exists? Now for that, an important note is provided. Given a situation or condition which has very many variables for Portland cement based systems which we saw recently, strategies at both levels are required and will help in obtaining more accurate solutions. Now let us see what is what are the limitations of mixed design strategies and then see the advantages of micro level or strategies through hydration models. Now the limitation of the mixed design strategies is that they help in understanding the workability, strength and durability or other performance properties of concrete arbitrarily which means some random basis is used in order to arrive at these strategies. In specific, if you see durability as I already mentioned is an extremely diverse area. Since each of the durability distress that we actually saw uh, in the previous slides has a definite mechanism associated and this mechanism could be associated with a binder or with a filler or with filler and binder. So the understanding of these mechanisms require knowledge about the composite at the micro level and uh, this micro level knowledge is not provided or not considered in the mixed design strategies which we saw in the previous lectures. The other uh, limitation is that mixed design strategies does not provide sufficient information about the porosity and permeability of Portland cement based base systems. Although it is arbitrarily known that these properties are related to strength and durability. So in the mixed design strategies what we have seen basically is how to adjust the proportions of ingredients primarily water, cement, fine aggregate, coarse aggregate and others which one to increase, which, which one to decrease and all those things. But however, the porosity and permeability information is completely unknown from those strategies. The next one is mixed design strategies does not provide any information about how to tackle shrinkage. Remember, shrinkage is a very important property which could either come under durability heading or it could come under long term properties. And uh, already we have seen in previous lectures that length change limits and maximum shrinkage strain for concrete is mentioned in the Indian standards. So if you go to the physical requirements for cement, you see that there is some length change value that is provided from the standpoint of shrinkage. Likewise, maximum shrinkage strain for concrete is also mentioned in IS 456-2000. Its value is approximately 0 0.0003. So uh, when these limits are actually provided, we do not know the basis on which those limits are provided and uh, these are not clearly addressed in the mixed design strategies. This is primarily because shrinkage is a property that is related to the porosity of the Portland cement based uh, systems and hence since porosity and permeability are not proper, properly dealt in mixed design strategies, information about shrinkage is currently not present. So uh, now coming on to the micro level strategies through hydration models. The hydration models help extensively in understanding the porosity of Portland cement based base systems which you cannot find in the mixed design strategies and they also try to interrelate the development of compounds with the strength and durability. Remember strength and durability is generally viewed from a macro level and porosity is generally viewed from the micro level. And, uh, 
and hence if you put it in a form of a triangular representation taking strength on one side and durability on the other side, the porosity which is a micro level property, the correlation between strength and porosity should be understood and likewise a correlation between porosity and durability should also be understood and uh, these can be understood only through the knowledge on cement hydration. Strategies through hydration models can be developed only by understanding the hydration behavior of Portland cement based base systems and in order to understand the hydration behavior you need to understand the following things morphology and microstructure of clinker compounds microstructure components and characteristics of hydrated compounds remember morphology and microstructure is for the unhydrated compounds and uh, microstructure components and characteristics is for the hydrated compounds and the reactivity of compounds and chemical reactions associated microstructural changes that are happening inside the system and volumetric changes happening inside the system so if you understand all these things then you can understand the hydration behavior you can understand the porosity and the interrelationship of porosity and strength and porosity and durability under strategies through hydration models we can also find that many concrete properties change with time that is 0 to 28 days due to changes in its microstructure and concrete properties actually develop at the micro level although the measured properties are at the macro level at micro level different compounds both hydrated and unhydrated their morphology and characteristics should be understood in terms of microsexual properties such as porosity, pore structure and others to understand which parameter is critical and which is not critical and which is alterable to obtain a balance between performance and economy. So, so what we have seen in the previous lectures from say lecture 1 to lecture 3 done by Professor Sudhir Mishra is that we have seen that concrete is a very versatile material, popular material has huge applications and we have also seen the importance of workability, strength and durability um, and he has also covered some of the important test methods uh, that, uh, that is conventionally used for concrete and also some typical values or limits that are provided for each and uh, for each property um, and in lectures 4 to 10 we have seen introduction about cement primarily the production and properties of cement aggregates again production and properties of aggregates we have also seen mixed design strategies how to use Indian standard method of mixed design how to mix design how to get a proper proportion based on uh, some of the uh, basic data provided for an engineer and also we have seen some chemical admixtures which can be added along with the concrete ingredients if a particular property like workability or um, air content is not achieved. So having, uh, having covered lecture 1 to 10 which actually focuses primarily on concrete lecture 11 to 20 primarily focuses on the hydration aspects of Portland cement based base systems and uh, the topics that you will see in this week are as follows. So morphology of clinker compounds, reactivity of clinker compounds, ke uh, chemical reactions in Portland cement all you will see under lecture 12 and components of hydrated Portland cement based system, mechanism of cement hydration introduction to heat of hydration of Portland cement based system in lecture 13, stages in cement hydration, understanding set, setting and hardening process from the perspective of cement hydration, characteristic of hydrated compounds and primarily we will see the major compounds that we will see in lecture 14 and characteristic of hydrated compounds not the major one but others that are available that we see in lecture 15. So this week we will see and with this, uh, this lecture gets over.
Thank you.